Hi, this is Connie from Pixalitydesign.com. And Cheryl had a question about how to set up her Squarespace website to take event registrations. So we're going to talk through that right now. And I will show you on her site just how to get that going. Um, so to give you an idea of where we're heading here, this is a different client site. So they own a kid's gym. And this is their sales page for their summer day camps. So they go on, they talk about the details of the camp, and they show some pictures and the schedule and everything. And then down at the bottom, there's a couple different buttons, a couple different options, whether you want to uh, register for the full season or for just individual weeks. But these are just two different products that we have dropped in here. So the thing that makes it different for an event registration is when you click Add to Cart, it's going to pop up a form. And so you can get the information you need um, for that person who's attending. So for this, in this case, we're you know, looking for t-shirt sizes and the hours that they're needing and the names and the grades and all that. So once you hit add to cart, it's going to go into the normal Squarespace e-commerce shopping cart system where they have a shopping cart that they can keep adding different things to and they can check out and use coupon codes and pay with PayPal or a credit card and all that. So this is the ultimate kind of idea of what we're looking to set up on Cheryl's site. So the very first thing she needs to do is tell her website where she wants her money to go. So we can add products and collect money all we want on the website, but Squarespace needs to know where you want that money to go, how to get that into your hands because you're the business owner. So we're going to go to settings and payments down here under commerce. And this is where you connect um, your payment processor, whichever one you're using. So with Squarespace, you can either use, you can use and or, you can use both or a single one, either Stripe, which um, processes just normal all credit cards and stuff, or you can also use PayPal. And you can set them both up to, to accept both payment methods on checkout, which I recommend doing. If you've got a PayPal account um, and you'll need to set up a Stripe account, and you can do that both from here for either one. So say you want to connect Stripe, if you click the connect Stripe button, and if you have a Stripe account, it'll automatically bring it up and log you in and ask if you want to connect that one. If you don't have a Stripe account, then it will run you through actually setting one up and you'll put in all the information for your bank accounts and the things that you want um, the, um, connected with that payment processor. It's trying to connect me because I already have an account. So we're going to say no, but that's how you would, you would set one up if you don't already have a Stripe account. Same thing goes for PayPal. If you click the PayPal button, you can either log in with your current PayPal information or you can get started and enter an email address and actually start a PayPal account um, right here. Okay, so once you've got at least one of those two payment methods set up, then you're ready to start accepting payments on your account. So that's step one. The next step, we're going to go into the Pages panel, and we're going to create a Products page. So we're going to just create it down in the Not Link section now, since we're just playing around with it. We don't want anyone to see it yet, quite yet. So we're going to press the plus sign next to the Not Linked section. And there's a normal page. We're kind of used to that. There's probably some other ones that you've used, a folder, a blog. We're going to select this time a Products page, the dollar sign right there. And if you blog on Squarespace, and you're kind of familiar with how this is set up, but we're going to look at the products page. I just clicked on, that happened kind of quick. Let me show you what I did there. So I just clicked on this new products page. You can click on the little arrow, just click on the name of it. And it's just like a blog and that it expands and it gives you more options. It's like a container that holds a bunch of products, whereas a blog page holds a bunch of blog posts, a products page holds a bunch of different products. So to add our first new product, we're going to go up to the plus sign in the top right. And in this case, for an event, this is a service. It's not a physical product. That's something that ships. A dig digital product is something like a video or a PDF that they're going to download. And so in this case, it's a service. So we're going to click service there. And then it's going to bring up this little window that allows us to put all the information we want about the event. So um, I've got this little... Um, photo here. We're going to drag that in and let that upload it for a photo to represent the event. Cheryl's event is called Yoga Drum Beats. So here's the service product name. We're going to put that up there. And then pricing is next. So we're going to click the edit there. And you can do a lot here with putting different prices, um, different quantities. For this one, we're just going to add a price here, add an option. Oops, an option up here. 
And option one, this is where, think about this as a store. So they're giving you different options for color, size, style, material, and that sort of stuff. But we're just going to go event registration because we have a one size fits all event here. So we're gonna save that option. And we're going to put the price in. And her price is, oops, $30 for pre-registration, which is what we're taking here online. And then we wanna change the stock. Right now this says the stock is just one, so we just have one to sell, but let's say she's got capacity for 50 people, so we'll put 50 there. You can also check unlimited if it's you know a huge, huge event. Um, so we'll say 50, she can go back and change that. So we're gonna say, um, go back to the item over here. So we've got the pricing in there. And then I'm just navigating around those little top menus up at the top. That was pricing and variance. We're back to item, which is the first one. So this is where you put an event description. So you could put in the address, um, you know, details, what is it, who's, who's teaching, you know, what, um, basically one of, this is the, the product description of what you're selling, what the event you're actually selling there. So I d type up something right there. And then we're going to go up to, we'll check the additional info here. This is if you've got even more, you've got some videos, you know, promoting it, or you've got a, um, some other content, some more detailed information, bios about people who are presenting, that sort of thing can go in the additional information section there too. The next, and this is the big one, this is the form tab up top. So this is where you're going to create a new form, and this is the form that's going to show up when people check out. So yoga drum beats registration form and then we can add whatever form fields we want so we probably want name so we'll add that one in and we're going to make that required we need to know who's buying the ticket and we maybe want to have an email address so we can send them a confirmation let's make that required also and let's see we could even do a phone number. Um, that might be all the information we want. We may, might not need any other. If you had um, needed a date in there, if you were selling for different dates, you could put in th that in there. Um, but let's put a phone number and we'll just make that optional just for this example here. Okay, so we've got a registration form. So we're gonna hit save on the form. And, and another good thing that's handy in Squarespace is once you've got that registration form for any other events, this will be an option that you can select. So you might not even want to name it yoga or drum beats registration form. You might want to just do it, you know, local event registration form. So then you can use it for different events that you do. You wouldn't have to type in all the different fields a second time if you had a second event that loosely fit the same parameters as, as this event. Okay, so we've got that. Um, options, if we want to use a summary block, and I've got another video on how to use summary blocks. This is where we put the thumbnail image in. It's just always a good idea just to drag in that same image right there um, to give yourself the option later. Um, and then this is saying that the default button is add to cart um, and purchase when express checkout is enabled. Um, so if we only are selling one thing, we'll probably have express checkout enabled so they don't have to go to the actual shopping cart. But in this case, we might want to click, instead of add to cart, we might want to have register now. That would make a little more sense for an event registration. So we'll use that instead. Um, and then we'll hit save and publish. Okay, and then you can see how she's got a product available in her product page. She's got the one event registration. Um, as she adds more products in there, either physical products or more event registrations or digital products, she would have um, just more of these little card things that show the different products, what your stock is and the name of it and the price on it. So there's a couple different ways that we can show this to our visitors to get people to um, register for our event. The first is we can actually drag this whole new products page up into the main navigation and we can send people to this page and it's going to look like this. It's just going to look almost like a store with one product in it. And then they could click on the product, see the details of it, register for it, and they'll go all the way to checkout and be able to purchase it um, and fill out the form along the way. So that's one way we can do it. We can actually just use this products page as it is right now. 
The other way we can do it, and let's go down to this test page that she has, is if we wanted to create a page that's just for that event, we, you know, maybe had photos from last year, we wanted to talk about it and tell you, tell you a little bit more about who's there. We could build an entire page just dedicated to that one product. And then at the bottom, go to insertion point, and we're going to look for a product block. So that's kind of down near the bottom under the commerce one, and it's just called product. So we're going to add one of those. In that case, then we can just add this little pop-up window comes up. It says find a product, so let's just start typing it in, and it'll pop up. Yoga drum beats, there it is. Click on that product, and then it put it in there really big, but we can say we want to show the image, we want to show the title, we want to show the price. We can say whether we want to add the show description. We can choose whether we want to add a cart button. That's all right there. We can choose if we want that center or left. Let's keep it at left. Um, and then we can apply it. So now we have that product in there and that's a giant product button. So let's add some spacers over here. Make it smaller. Add another spacer over here to resize it. But you get the idea there. So this is now just a single product on any page where you, so you can promote your event on any page, in any blog post, on your home page, anywhere you just want to drop that one product in, you can do that and so people can see it. So I'm going to save that just so she has an example there. Um, and then the last thing you want to do when you're promoting an event, and so you've got that. So say we've got now um, that product block. We've got maybe it dropped in on our home page. We've got it up on our offerings page. Maybe we even dragged in a, a specific page in our navigation that says um, events, you know, maybe an events tab or even um, yoga drum beats, you know, its own actual page you could send people to. So we, ought, we might want to consider adding an announcement bar. An announcement bar, go back to the fundamental athletics site. up at the top of the screen. So they've got this black bar up there at the top of their screen that's on every page of their website and it's promoting what registration they have open right now. So right now it's promoting their summer day camps because we just put that up and we want people to see that now it's open for registration. So it just says summer camp registration is open now, click here to register. When people click on it, it comes up that page, that, um, that summer camp registration page. So if we want to add that on Cheryl's site, we would go to the home menu and it's under design, announcement bar, and you can just disable it or enable it here. So it's disabled, we're going to enable it. And then this is where you type in the stuff. So you would say, register now for yoga drum beats. And what date is it? It is April 8th. New York, New York. She might want to put some different information in there, but you get the idea. Okay, so we've got that there, and then the click through to add URL, we're actually, we need to choose where that product page is located, where they can actually register. So in this case, in the example I did, it would be that test page down there that we dropped that product into. Um, but you would make that something a little more, more logical right there. So you'd hit save on that announcement bar, and then you can see it's black. Black, she might want black in that font, but the font doesn't really match her site. That's just the default one. So to style it, you're going to go into the style editor, and that's where you can change the color. If you click on the announcement bar, it'll bring up, it'll filter out just the options for changing the announcement bar. So you can change the background color and the color of the text and the font that's on the bar. So. And that's how you do that. Since she's not quite ready, I'm going to go back to the announcement bar and disable it. And that's all there is to it. If you want to disable it, enable it, um, you just go right in design announcement bar and you can add that in there. So that's a great way to throw something up to catch people's attention right when they get to your site. It's on every page of your site and direct them towards that event that you're um, taking registrations for. So, all right, good luck everybody setting up your website and promoting your upcoming events and getting lots of registrations and people to attend. I'll see you next time.